Hello everyone, my name is Nessa and welcome to my first Animal Crossing guide. Recently, I've been working on getting my dream villagers and as you can see, I've already gotten a few like Diana, Bunny, and Stitches. Now, the number one question I get asked is, how did you do it? And since I want to help everyone also get their dreamies, today I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step process since I've noticed other YouTube videos don't really walk you through it and personally, I like as much hand-holding as possible. This video will be the first of many since there's so many ways to get your dream villagers and I want to cover it all. The kickout method this video will be showing is called the 15 day method. You'll need to make note of what the date is that you're starting on. I'm going to call this day zero. As you can see by my clock, my day zero is April 26th. This method will require time traveling since it's the fastest way. If you'd like to kick out villagers without time travel, the short answer is to just ignore them, but this can potentially take weeks. Take note of at the top here where it says synchronize clock via internet. When we're time traveling in the future, we'll be turning that off. Now I'll be showing you exactly what I do on day zero. You need to run around and talk to some of your villagers. The rule is generally three to five. I like to talk to about four or five just in case doesn't really matter which villagers you talk to. Personally, I don't think it makes any difference when it comes to which villagers want to move out. As long as you're talking to about four to five of your villagers on day zero, you're good. Generally, villagers like to hang out around the resident services and or in front of their houses. So if you want to do this quickly because you'll probably be repeating this process a few times, that's the best place to look. Once you're done talking to your villagers, you'll want to save until you hit the screen here that says save complete. Then you go to your home screen and close your game, completely exit out of it. For the rest of the video, I'm going to cut out all of the save and loading screens, so don't be surprised if there's some skip scenes. I just want to save on time. Now we're going to go back to our systems time and go up 15 days. Remember, you're going to have to turn off the synchronized clock to internet thing. 15 days from my day zero, April 26th is May 11th. Also, I'm going to keep the time around 12 or 1 p.m. because this is when villagers are most active and most likely to want to move out. Villagers also won't want to move out on event days, so try to avoid these dates for your day zero, day 15, etc. Now, I'm going to load up the game again and run around to see if a villager has a thinking bubble above their head. This thinking bubble is a signal that they want to move out. Remember, the best place to look for them is around resident services or in front of their house. A villager will not want to move out if they are indoors, only outdoors. As you can see, Agent S has a thought bubble over her head and she wants to leave. If she was a villager that I want to leave, I would say yes, of course. Later on in the video, I will show you what saying yes looks like. But currently, Agent S was not the villager I wanted to leave, so I'll be saying no to her. If I want her to leave in the future, I just have to prompt her to do the bubble again on another day with the same method. Since on day 15, Agent S wanted to move, but I didn't want her to move, I'm going to have to go back to my clock and reset to day zero. Then we're going to repeat the process of talking to four to five villagers on day zero and then going up 15 again. And I think now you're starting to get why it's called the 15 day method. What if you ran around on day 15 and no one had a bubble above their head? Simply don't talk to your villagers and go up one day. Here's me setting the clock to May 12th. If once again on the 16th day, no one wants to move out, go back to day zero. Someone will guaranteed want to move out on this day. To be clear, you only need to talk to your villagers on day zero. You don't have to talk to them on day 15 and 16 if you don't see anyone with a bubble. This next clip is after Agent S wanted to leave on day 15, and then I closed out the game, went back to day zero, did all my villager talking on day zero, saved, went up 15 again, tried searching for someone leaving on day 15, no one wanted to, I went up one day, day 16, no one wanted to leave, didn't talk to anyone, saved, and then I went back to day zero again. And here, Bunny finally wanted to move out on day zero. Once again, I didn't want Bunny to leave, so I told her no. But what's notable about the fact that she wanted to leave is that it's on day zero. Even though I had a villager that wanted to leave on day zero, I still have to go around and talk to everyone again. So that's what I do next. 
so I didn't show myself doing that, but you're just gonna have to trust me that I talked to everyone on day zero right after I talked to Bunny. Then I will skip ahead again another 15 days. This time I happen to get a campsite villager. It's not guaranteed that's gonna happen. It'll just happen occasionally. Like I said earlier, I'll cover everything about campsites in the future. The short of it is yes, it's possible to kick out a villager via campsite, but it won't give you an open plot. And instead, the campsite villager will move in. If you like the campsite villager though, then go ahead. I'm hoping by now that you guys have got the hang of it, how the process works, and I wish you luck that you get it after not too many tries. Because really, from here on out, it's just luck. I'm gonna skip ahead until Kid Cat wants to move out. That's who I was trying to get to move out. I'm giving him to good home. He was going to a friend, so don't come at me, please, <laughs> for giving away Kip Cat. I loved him while I had him. So here I am agreeing to let him leave, and then I will show you what it looks like if you save and go up a day. It looks like Kid Cat wanted to leave on one of my day 15s because it is May 11th, and then now I will go up one day. On their last day, Isabel will announce that they're leaving in the announcements, and then when you go to their house, they will be what is called in boxes, which basically just means that they're packing up. If you would like to have a friend come over and pick them up, or you're doing some kind of villager trading, this is the time for the other party to come to your island and talk to your villager. Now we're going to move up one last time from May 12th to May 13th. As you can see, Kid Cat has officially moved out and the pot is open. And there you have it, a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to move out your villager. Now you're free to go adopt a villager from someone else or maybe go island hunting, whatever you want to do. But do keep in mind that this is the only day where the plot will stay open guaranteed. If you time travel at all or let a day pass, there's a chance that Tom will fill the plot with a random villager. Since you guys now know what to do on each day, day 0, 15, and 16, I'm going to put up on the screen a flowchart of every scenario. If it's the village you want to move out, etc, etc. I tried to make this guide as thorough as possible and I really hope it helps. If you still have any questions, feel free to comment them below or live on my stream, <laughs> both of which I'll link in the description below. My stream schedule is currently Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9pm EST. And if you found this guide helpful, feel free to hit subscribe and follow me on my socials. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed your stay. See you in the next one!